welcome to my Bradster class. It's like master class, but with Brad in it. <laughs> Today I'm going to be taking you on a journey and I probably should have scripted this. I have now scripted this. Most of you will be familiar of the setting in your CEO or MC menu, which is called Formation Flight Assist. And I'm gonna tell you now, this is the most clapped thing I have ever seen. I don't know why this is in the game. It doesn't work. Now, if you wanna do some proper formation flying, like in the videos you see on this channel, that is going to be totally possible to do with that setting turned on. So if that's what you've been trying, give up now. Let's get rid of this broken gameplay feature and teach you how to do it properly. Hi, I'm Brad, and you might know me as that talking Molotov, and I'm going to take you on a journey that will change your life forever. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to fly in formation with your pals, just like I would if I was teaching a new recruit to join my group. So let's all hold hands and get right to it. Aww. Getting started. Number one. Choosing an aircraft in the world of formation flying in GTA Online is very important because some of them have really wacky handling and will make your life extremely harder than it needs to be. Examples of this would be the Rogue or the Alpha Z1. Yes, they're cheap, but as a beginner to formation flying, you will want to stay well away from these. <laughs> for the sake of example, we will be using the Molotov for this guy. A, because I have the most experience flying this aircraft compared to the other ones, so I don't feel like I'll be able to teach you very well on the other ones. And two, it was like it was designed for it. Like, honestly, it's perfect. Number two. Hold your controller in your hand. If you're unsure of how to hold your controller, here are some examples of how not to do it. This one, this one, and definitely don't do this one. Number three. Aircraft settings. It is very important that you and whoever your friend is that you are flying with have the same settings. Now, when you're a little bit more experienced, you can kind of play around with this a little bit, but for now, use the same settings. <laughs> So let's talk about handling first, okay? Handling first. As a beginner, and you're just gonna be formation flying, you're not gonna be doing anything crazy, I would recommend stock or smooth handling. Now that is primarily because formation takes very, very small movements on the controller. And by setting your handling lower while you're learning, it gives you a lot more wiggle room, a lot more room for error, let's say. And the smoother you're flying, the cleaner and neater the formation will look. Because the things that look small to you when you're in the air, on the ground, they look very clapped. Engine upgrades. Everyone needs the same engine upgrade. Whether that's EMS 1, 2, 3, or 4, or you just don't have anything on it, they all need to be exactly the same. Number four. Now that you and your pals are all set up, you are ready to try your forced formation. Wow, yay! The standard formation that I would recommend starting is called Battle. It looks like this. It is a very basic formation and it is the foundation for pretty much everything. Now, first things first. Whoever is practicing as lead jet at this time, you have a very important job to do and it is necessary that you understand some basic fundamentals. Number one, always stay at cruising speed. Always. What I mean by this is never touch your power controls. Ever. Don't break and don't accelerate. Let me explain a little bit. Planes on GTA Online have a set go forward speed. That means that you wouldn't have to hold the power down to move like you would in a car. <laughs> now the reason you sit at this speed is because everybody knows where that is. If you're holding down the power at all, everyone's gonna need to work out where that is on their controller and everyone's gonna have a much harder time. And plus, it's gonna make your formation turning awful and we will go into that a little bit later in the video. But it is very important that you as lead jet always stay cruising. Lead jet tip number two. Always stay below 1,000 feet. GTA has very strange laws of physics at times, including this one. Above 1,000 feet, aircraft in GTA go much faster than they do below 1,000 feet. Much faster. Now you can tell how high up you are by using the little indicator on your map. The bottom line is zero, and then each line going up above that is 1,000 feet. Try and put yourself just halfway between those, maybe a tiny bit higher, and 
you're good to go. So it's important to understand that your display height will always be below 1,000 feet. Not only is it easier for the crowd to see you, but you're gonna have a much easier time flying in formation down there. Now, this includes don't fly at 990 feet. Yes, you're below 1,000 feet, but the second you turn, the outside of the formation are gonna be above 1,000 feet. They're all gonna go and get lost and die forever. Number three of being a lead jet. Don't over bank, <coughs> Ollie. What I mean by this is don't make your turn bank any steeper than it needs to be. The more you bank, the harder it is for everybody else to stay in position. Plan your movements so you can take wider turns and then everything will look much cleaner. Number four being lead jet tip. Be a smooth boy. But I probably shouldn't assume that you're a a boy, because I might get cancelled. Basically, don't smash your jet from side to side like an absolute pleb who's had 90 tubs of G Fuel and is dribbling all over his controller. Plan your movement. Be smooth on your controls. Make your movements as predictable as possible so that everyone can follow you and be smooth. Now that the lead jet knows what to do, it is your job to follow them. Let the lead jet fly you in a straight line north to south above the sea. Make sure you're well clear of obstacles and make sure you don't have to turn too much at this stage. Now you're gonna do this because you need to learn what it looks like when you're in the correct position on your screen. You will feel uncomfortably close. You will feel like you cannot get closer and there will still be a massive gap there. So it is really good to get used to this. Now this is something that is really tricky to teach because it is different for everybody. It can be different with the aircraft, it can be different with the camera modes that you are currently using, your screen can make a difference. This is something that you are probably going to need help with in-game. So something I used to like doing was getting one of the more experienced lads to go above the formation and look at it from straight down sort of point of view or even go on like a beach or something and they can talk you into position. It's much better for them to be flying along with you so they get a consistent view rather than your passing view because your perspective will change. Let them talk you in, trust them with your life trust them because they can see a lot more than you can. Now if you're lonely and you don't have a spare friend to do that with, just ask the lead jet to do it for you. Now when you're in position and they've told you that, keep it. Remember what's on your screen. The little line on my wing is in line with that bit on his wing. Remember little things like that and you'll be good to go. Before you know it, this will be totally natural to you and you'll be able to do it without even thinking about it. I know it may feel really frustrating to start with, but it's one of those things that is frustrating, 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 frustrating. You got it, bang, done. It doesn't feel like there's a learning curve. You just kind of do it. Now, the reason this is so difficult is formation flying on a flat screen is very, very difficult because you have no depth perception. It is literally like doing it with one eye. But now, if you try this in a simulator like DCS, for example, in VR, where you can use two eyes, the entire experience is so much easier. <laughs> now, this is where we get into the juicy stuff. The good stuff! My number one rule for formation flying in any case is always stare at lead jet. Like this, like this, like this. Stare at them, just stare at them. Look at nothing else, just look right at that jet. When the lead jet moves, it is important that you keep them dead still on your screen. When they move left, you move left. When they move right, you move right. When they go up or down and over and out, you, you get it. But now when you're comfy flying in a straight line, it's very natural to move on to the next step, turning. Now this is obviously a very key part of formation flying. Learning to turn together as if you are one aircraft. My methods for training new pilots was just to do figure of eights around the Alamo Sea until they got it down. This could take hours on end, so just bear that in mind. It is important to practice on both sides of the wings, on the left side and the right side. It is quite different to turn left on the right wing than it is to turn left on the left wing. I'll explain this in detail a little bit later on. Now, how to actually do it! Wow! <coughs> Let me explain using my gorgeous... <coughs> Let me explain you some of my gorgeous man hands. Let's say we have the lead jet and you are on the right wing. Right, we're going this way for your benefit. So, we're gonna turn left. What? So you will also rotate your ailerons left. What? But have you noticed something? Oh, I've rotated my wings left, but I haven't actually stayed in the right position. What's going on? Well, Mr. Jet, if you had done your elevators as well as turn left, 
you would have stayed in the right position. Oh, that's great advice. Thank you. So here's what you do. As the lead jet turns left, you are going to turn left and use your elevator to stay in line. You're not going like that. You're going like this, as if it's one fixed wing. Remember, like one, that's two, one aircraft. Now what a lot of newbies do is they will go like this. Yeah, they will turn and then pull up and get themselves into position. You need to do it at the same time, the exact same time. It will seem like it looks fine when it's just two of you or three of you, but as soon as you get more people stacked up behind you, it creates a big chain reaction and you end up like this. Don't do that. Get practicing. Now this is why you need to practice on the left and the right hand side of the wing. If you're on the other side of the wing, which is the... The left side of the wing, a lead jet turns left, you're gonna need to rotate your ailerons left. You are gonna need to not elevate, you're gonna need to descend. Get it? So you're going left and ascending, whilst the person on the right is going left and ascending. Wow! And remember, don't turn, then do your elevator. Do it at the same time. The same time! Now you might be thinking, that's obvious. That doesn't sound too difficult. I'll be honest. It's not difficult when you get used to it. This is the very basic fundamentals, but it is stuff that people forget when they're going into it. However, that's not all you do to turn. There are other things to consider. Power. Now, like we discussed earlier, the lead jet will not touch his power controls and he will stay going the same speed. So, Brad, in theory, that means I don't have to touch my power controls either, right? Well, yes, but actually, no. This is where things get a little sciency. Let's draw a path of jets in a 90 degree turn to the left. This is the lead jet and its desired path. This is you. Wow. And you are on the right wing following them through. Now, because you are on the right side of the wing and you're doing a left turn, this means you are on the outside of the turn. Now this will make sense to you in just a minute. If the lead jet is taking the path here at cruising speed and you are on the outside of the turn, you are going to have a slightly further distance to cover than he is. Now this means that to stay in line with the lead jet, you're gonna need to add a little bit of power so that you get round and stay with him. Make sense? If you're both staying at the same velocity but you've got a further distance to travel, it's gonna take you long to get there and therefore you're gonna get left behind. So all you do to combat this is add a little bit of power if you're on the outside of a turn. Now, in this example, if you're on the left side of the formation, ah, you've got a lovely job. You've got the complete opposite problem. You've got much, much less distance to cover than the lead jet. So naturally, if you're going at the same velocity, you're gonna be overtaking them pretty quickly. The way to combat this is by riding your brake. This is harder than adding the power in my opinion and I'll explain that in just a moment. Now, something you will notice, the more people you add onto your formation, the harder this gets. The further away you are from the lead jet, the more this is exaggerated. If you are seven jets wide and you are on the out outside of the turn, the very outside of it, you may as well be just doing that. <laughs> However, on the inside of the turn, the person on the very inside, they can't just go like that. And why do you think that is? Because their bloody engine will turn off. Now, if your engine ends up turning off, my cable came out again. If your engine ends up turning off, it doesn't turn back on very quickly and you will end up just falling right back out of formation and it is gonna be very bad. So it is your job to find the perfect balance between staying in line and not stalling your engine. And this is why like in some of my videos, like the, the big formation flying ones, like like the volatile one, when I'm looking behind me and all of these people are going, falling way behind on the outside of the turn, but on the inside of the turn, they're all overtaking like anything. Now you understand why that is. <laughs> now the last part of the turning tutorial, we have covered the ailerons, we've covered the elevators, and now we have covered the power. So what's left? You guessed it. The rudder! Now this is a very key tool that is overlooked in the world of GTA Online. Now formation flying in real life or other simulators doesn't seem to require a lot of rudder unless you're in an extreme circumstance. However, in GTA Online, we have very strange physics that we have to learn. So you may notice that as the formation banks into the turn, that when you turn like this, even if you do everything perfectly, you will start to swing out like this. Almost like it's some kind of centrifuge. It is very clapped, but this will mean that you will probably have to do some rudder input into the formation as you're turning as well. And I am not joking when I say 
When you're formation flying, you will be using every control surface on your jet constantly. And not only will you be doing it constantly, but you will be doing it to the millimeter. If you're hearing this noise, you're doing it wrong. You need to be doing micro minuscule movements and you probably can't even see my thumb really moving, but that just feeling about it is probably about what it is. It's just when the pressure comes on on the controller, that, that is about the movement you're, you're working towards. Now you may notice that there is a theme here. The further out in the formation that you get from lead jet, the harder your job is gonna be and the more exaggerated movements need to be. The further ahead you have to predict them and the more bang on you have to be. There is hardly any room for error the further you get out in the formation. So naturally, well this is no different for the rudder either. You are probably gonna find yourself using quite a bit of rudder in some circumstances. Now last but not least at all, voice calls, wow! Now these can seem a little cringe to start with, believe me, I know. But the difference is you're not using them just to sound like a real pilot. Oh, I wanna be a red arrow, so I'm gonna try to sound like the red arrows. I am aware that it sounds a little bit role play, but they have actual use and you are going to struggle very much if you don't use them. Now voice calls, you can make them whatever you want. They can be however you want them to be. Just as long as everyone in the formation knows what's gonna happen, they have a clear warning and they know exactly when it's gonna happen. That is the important thing. You can't just go, go left. So when do I go left? When? Whereas in the red arrows in real life structure, it's coming left. Now, so you notice something there. There's even spacing between the words, almost like a beat, right? There's plenty of time. You know exactly what's gonna happen. Coming, right? We all love coming. Coming is the first word of this sentence. There is no other instruction that starts with the word coming in formation flying in the routine that we do. If you hear the word coming, you know that you are going to be turning either left or right. Your next pot of information, left. You know which direction now. You've got all the answers. You know what the move is going to be. Coming left, but not only there. You have also determined when it's gonna happen at that point because the length of time between those words is the length of time between the next one, right? Coming left now. So in that little gap, the next gap, you know when it's gonna come. And you turn, you, you input your control movements on the end of now, now. Now, like that. So it's coming, left, now. So you see why this is important. If you just say, going left, like an absolute melon, your formation's gonna start going like, woo, 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 and it's going to look shit. That is why the Red Sparrow's voice calls were always just based off the real life ones that work in real life, because they have function, they are designed to do something, you know? So I understand it might look on the outside a little bit role play. It actually has a use, and that's what people don't seem to realize. I, I have seen the, these lads start in display teams and things, and you hear their comms, and it's, well, that's why you're shit. <laughs> Obviously, you don't have the heart to tell them at the time, but that's why it looks shit. Just, just change that a little bit. Just make sure there's an even gap between the words and it'll make a massive difference. So don't let voice calls go to waste. Now I have another tip for the lead jet here regarding voice calls. Okay, okay, you're gonna listen. Listen to this. Listen. Listen to this. If you are the lead jet, there will be something called mic delay. Wow, what? Mic delay is a real thing. And unfortunately, when you're in an Xbox party with somebody or a PlayStation party or you're on Discord or whatever, when you say the word now, the person on the end of that call will not hear the word now at the exact time that you say it. It can be a second and a half. It can be three, well, maybe not three seconds. That's a bit taking a piss. Well, unless your name's Speedy Gonzalez. Speedy has the worst internet, so sometimes it actually takes years. I'm still waiting on a reply from conversations we've had years ago. I've just got my headset running because I know this next sentence will probably be here in probably about a month. But the point is, make sure you account for mic delay when you are the lead jet. So if you, you don't move on the nut of now, okay? Listen, you will go coming left now. See that? Coming left now. Now, that depends on your mic delay. You, this is something you will need to work out. This depends on your internet speed, your latency, all this dumb shit, but there will be a, a sort of average that you're gonna need to work out. But as far as everyone else is concerned in the formation, you go on now, nut of now. Now these tiny little nitty gritty things like being half a second out and stuff, 
That may not sound like much of a difference to you. And if you just want to have fun and you just want to fly with your mates, that's absolutely fine. But if you want something that is show-stopping and amazing and, oh my god, people just go, uh, when they see it, the tiny little details are what makes the cake. Yeah, they make the cake, and I like cake, so please make cake. So that pretty much concludes the basics of formation flying in GTA Online. Wow! I hope you're much better people now from the start of this video to the end of this video. It's, it, it's been a great experience sharing some of my basic knowledge with, with you all. Yeah. Now uh, before you leave, because I want some more watch time, I'm going to give you four basic tips of, four bonus tips, that's what I mean. Stick around. Now, turbulence. Dealing with turbulence. The first one is about turbulence. This can be a right pain in the ass in GTA Online. Same as the weather as well. Now obviously flying, if always flying in the rain, you might as well just land. If always flying in the snow, you might as well just land. If always flying in the fog, now you could do that, but no one's gonna see you. So you could train in the fog, but you're, you're, if you're trying to get exact positions of, you know, against a beach or wherever you want, or you want someone to watch you, chances are it's not gonna work out very well for you. Now there is actually a website that you can use which tells you the actual upcoming forecast in the GTA Online world. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I know there's a little icon in the web page within the game, but that literally tells you what the weather currently is, which is a bit fucking useless. Now, I've linked it in the description below, so um, go have a look at that. It tells you the weather up until 24 hours or something, like a day, game day in advance, and it's very useful, so make sure you know that. Also, one hour in game time is two minutes in the real world. That is something you will need to figure out when to do a display for an audience or an or how long something's gonna take. So just keep that in mind. Now turbulence, this is kind of in the same tip really, but it's kind of another one. Just write it through. Don't overcorrect to it. It will be something that is, it happen right when you're about to do a turn or right when you're about to do a move in front of the crowd. Just don't overcorrect to it because that's when it looks bad. If you're all riding turbulence at the same time, you're likely to all be roughly in the same place. If you overcorrect to it and panic, that's when things look a bit shit. So just try and get over it that way, but it is inevitably gonna happen and you'll just have to learn to deal with it. Second bonus tip, if you go out of bounds in GTA Online, your wings fall off, which is great fun. So if you're trying to do wide turns because you want to make your formation look nice, I just bear that in mind. But if you want to avoid this, I would recommend practicing down south because south of the map has the largest area of sea without hitting the border as to being up north when you go out for a break and you don't come back. Now the last one that is on the script here right now, and it's very specific to the Molotov. <laughs> now, this little bitch always wants to try and mess up your show. And I don't mean in the air because it is fantastic to fly. I'm on about before you take off. The Molotov has this thing where anytime you join a new session, whether that be you're logging into GTA for the first time of the day, or you're literally switching sessions, it, it resets its engine. Yeah, so when you're in the Molotov, make sure um, that all of you and your friends who are, fly who are flying in formation, make sure all of you go into your hangar, change your engine to the first EMS, because it's the cheapest, it'll cost you 9K. So every time you switch session and want to do formation flying, it's gonna cost you 9K, so make sure you've got some money in the bank. Switch it to EMS one, and then back to EMS four, or whatever the engine level you had. Because for some reason, uh, the game just resets the engine, makes it really slow. Even though you go into the hangar, it still says EMS four, it's not actually EMS4, so make sure you do, I mean, we call this resetting your jet. So reset your jet every time you go into a session. And that's about it.